Let's mm, drunk. Yes, it's more games made by Koei for the Super Nintendo, but this time around we've got one of their biggest critical and commercial successes. Well, on PC anyway. Genghis Khan 2 Clan of the Grey Wolf was a big cult hit, along with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms games, and it was originally made for home computers, of course. So systems like DOS, MSX2, the PC-88 and 9801, and the X68000 were the first to get this game, and it remains the best way to play it today. Later, Genghis Khan 2 was ported to the NES, Genesis, Sega CD, PlayStation, the PC Engine, and the Super Nintendo, and on the surface this may look and play like every other SNES Koei game, and uh, you'd be right, kind of, but to the game's credit, it's a smoother gameplay experience, things move a little bit faster, and it's not quite as confusing as other games of its kind. Don't get me wrong, this game is still Koei doing maximum Koei things, there's still menus on top of menus that are sorting dozens of options and settings and all that, and it's still a very good idea to dive into the instruction manual and reference it frequently throughout your playthrough. As usual, the structure here is to set up and organize your military, recruit people who can help you, strengthen relations, groom successors, trade with merchants, all while managing domestic affairs with the goal being to unite Mongolia and eventually unite Greater Eurasia. The game takes place across the 12th and 13th centuries where you've got cold weather causing crops to fail, and the Black Plague spreading like wildfire, leading to opportunistic warlords like Genghis Khan to take advantage and conquer anything and everything as he sees fit. There's four scenarios to complete, the first has you conquer all the tribes of Mongolia, the next two expands your empire further west, and after you unite Mongolia, a fourth scenario is unlocked. If you lose in battle and you've chosen no successor that's older than 10 years old, it's game over. If you die and your successor is old enough to take your place, then you can continue on, which is kinda cool. There's actually a spend time with family option to make sure that your kids don't hate you. The thing that helps set Genghis Khan 2 apart is how direct it is compared to other Koei titles. The name of the game here is to fight and conquer. There's not as much of an emphasis on making friends or caring about what the rest of the world thinks. The combat gets to the point a little quicker and it's a bit more polished. Instead of having tiny icons with numbers, we've got larger sprites and simpler, smaller battle screens. Genghis Khan 2 uses the same engine as the Romance of the Three Kingdoms games, but it's been tweaked quite a bit for this game, allowing you to take advantage of hit and run combat as opposed to just getting sucked into a battle and then that's the next hour of your life right there. You can also raise entire cities that you conquer, you unlock more features as you play, like diplomacy, like Genghis Khan never knew what that was, but it helps make the game less rigid and more flexible and player friendly, especially if you're new to games like this. Another small thing this game does is use letter grades instead of a number rating for character stats. It's not a big deal, but I for one appreciate not seeing the screen cluttered up with numbers everywhere for once. Instead the game looks closer to my high school report card. The combat in Genghis Khan 2 is split up into two screens. The first is a typical hexagonal grid where you try and maneuver the enemy into some bad terrain, then you switch to another smaller screen where the combat actually takes place. So the strategy here is kinda twofold, and it works pretty well. It's just, you know, still pretty dang slow because it's a Koei game. It is faster than stuff like PTO and Operation Europe at least. There's also a good amount of variety in the unit types here, depending on who you play as. Like, if you choose to play as the Japanese, you get artillery like cannons, you call upon samurai to help you out, and there's even stuff like troops mounted on elephants. The biggest flaw in the combat is when you get dazed. There's nothing more annoying than when your unit inexplicably turns yellow and spins around, and there's nothing you can do about it except sit there and twiddle your thumbs. This seems to be entirely luck-based, so yeah, you never want to swing for the fences right away because you never know when the game might decide to just say, nah, I think this game should just take a nap for a while. It happens to the computer opponent too, at least. So yeah, Genghis Khan 2 Clan of the Grey Wolf for Super Nintendo is yet another tactical game where you fight to conquer territory, appoint a general and an advisor, make sure the people there are happy and are able to generate resources, then you recruit more troops and go fight some more. The difference with this game versus every other Koei game is that it's a little more combat-centric. The scenarios are still pretty dang long, but this can still be a decent playthrough against a second player, provided you familiarize yourself with the manual or by watching a Let's Play somewhere. Genghis Khan 2 is one of the better Koei titles on the Super Nintendo. It's far from perfect, but at least it's not a granular micromanagement sim. There's actually some action here which I can appreciate, so if you dig games like this, I'd recommend checking this one out. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.